Hey, let's keep rolling. All right. <laughs> Chapter 2, uh, verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Right. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure. What we got to do? Set your heart aright and constantly endure. Constantly means it's a continual motion of this. Always. Because it's coming. The world hates it. Back then, they hated it when the king was there. How is it going to lighten up on us if you believe in the same thing? It's the same world, ain't it? Right. That world ain't ended. That world said it'll end at the second coming of Christ when that world will end. Right. Shalom, y'all. We're going over some things, cut some other people for y'all just getting here to do comments. This is y'all first time. Uh, what we believe down here, that we are the descendants of the lost tribes of Israel, specifically the tribe of Judah, according to the prophecies of the Bible. No power, black power movement here. We deal with the spirit of the truth. And the spirit don't see flesh tone. Yes, there is a promise to a specific group of people who we happen to be according to the prophecies of the Bible. So we want to get that clear. And we also believe in who locally known as Jesus Christ, or Yahweh Shah Hamashiach in the Hebrew, that sits on the right hand of the Father. So let's get it straight. We're not talking about men claiming to be the Christ. Right. Benny Carter, Yulon right. Mitchell, Jim Jones, all the rest, Sun Young Moon, David Koresh, all of them that claim to be the Christ. The That's not what we teach down there. That he said so too. What you saying, sis? The one shot at the White House. Yeah. Say oh, yeah. Him. But see, we know that's from Tom Fuller. <laughs> <laughs> you shoot at the White House and all. Is, is, is that the light of arrows that you, you say you coming back to destroy the earth with? A pop gun? They can't get through bullet, bulletproof glass? No. Let's read some more of that, Mal. Anybody got any questions so far? The topic we're hitting on today is concerning... The holidays that's coming up heavy on us, right in the midst of, of holy days that we have as well coming up. Mm -hmm. And how and what part <coughs> you are taking this, because there's got to be a line you refuse to cross. Right. And when Satan comes, Satan comes with a line crossing. He ain't coming with no BS or small things for you to get over the hurdle. He's coming with the drama. But he ain't coming till after you Verse 1 of this, come to serve the Lord. Before that, he'll play games with you. Spend all your money. Make life miserable. He already got you. But when you decide you're going to serve the Lord, then here he comes to make you blaspheme against the truth of God because there's no forgiveness for blasphemy of the Holy Spirit nor taking the mark of the beast. Everything else can be forgiven. Can be if you found in true repentance. But you take the mark, or you blaspheming the Holy Spirit, ain't no need you falling on kneecaps. <laughs> Satan blaspheming the Holy Spirit. There is no pardon for him. He knows this. His demons know it. The angels that left their first estate know it. There is no pardon. They have a death sentence. He's trying to get some company. Go ahead, bro. If you have to include suicide in that. Well, those two. it's a fine line. Oh, nobody never came back to tell us. Well, nobody never came back because the only, only deal we got 100 levels of consciousness. It's the deal. When somebody say, I've been back from the dead, they said I was dead three times. They thought, you're not considered dead according to passing from life to death and then to life. That's called rigor mortis. Rigor mortis sets in about 72 hours before full rigor mortis sets in. If you come back from rigor mortis, then you came back from the dead. Like last year. See, this, these nearby spirits, you have 100 levels of consciousness before the brain goes dead. That's why they hold people on these machines where the brain ain't completely dead yet. It still has a little spark of life left in it. Yeah, the machine is making them breathe. But what's the first thing they tell you? They probably hear everything y'all saying. They just can't respond. But they hear what you're saying. And if somebody comes out of that, yeah, I heard what y'all said about me when I was hooked to that machine. How y'all gonna crack jokes like that that this guy on my rear end was hanging out the back of it? 
and I'm on my deathbed. I heard you, Willie. You talking about like if he, I think the brother is asking like if somebody blew their brains out and they gave up the ghost right there. Or if somebody tried to do that and then they end up, you know, right. not dying right away. They right. was on the, you feel me? So I understand that, exactly that, what that we're different? saying. If they do that not to take the mark of the beast, same thing. Because if you have to kill yourself not to take it, the script don't tell us to commit self-murder right. or destroy an innocent temple. So if you are put in a position that you have to think about suicide, yeah, that's wrong, but that needs to be measured out by the most high because we only got two that I've ever read that says if you do these two, now there's questionable about, about child molestation because Christ said if you do this, it'd be better that you had not been born. So there are some better that you had not been born permanent sins, but suicide, I ain't, I ain't read. I've seen the way Hebrews took their own lives, like we're going to read a little bit in the Apocalypse, in the Maccabees, and they took their own lives rather than have these people kill them. But we got to look at the mindset of that individual. Saul took his own life, but Saul was in a, in a, in a place of already reprobate mind. Go ahead, what you got? It's just like also, too, uh, a lot of the brothers and sisters during the slave passage that the, uh, a lot of the sisters got their babies and jumped, jumped over forward. Right. So they wouldn't have to go through that ordeal. I mean, so the most I say he have mercy on who he have mercy upon. Right. So, right. I mean, that's a thin line right there. Do they make it to the kingdom or, I mean, is it for, for, uh, for being or is it not? But I use that example right there because it's basically they felt that they had no choice. And the most I said, I'm only going to put on you what you can endure. Yeah. Right. If you say that's enough for me and you want out, then you take out. It's the same thing when you're on your deathbed. Once they hear somebody they've been waiting for to come out of town, they let go. Or you tell them, look, you can let go. Mama's going to be all right. We're going to take care of that. And then they let go. Mm -hmm. It's the same as Christ in the ninth hour, which is the hour of prayer. Acts 3rd chapter, Acts 10th chapter. We know that in the ninth hour of prayer, when the heavens open, because we know the clouds, it got dark. He gave it up. He asked most high, why have thou forsaken me? And then he said, I commend my spirit. So Christ at that point said, I've had enough. I've, I've been on the cross. I'm suffocating but because I can't have no bones broken. Because after a while, if you're still hanging up there and alive, what they do is break the bone so that right. you die fast. Right. Right. Well, he had to complete the prophecy. He took as much as he could to fulfill that where any naysayer out there can say he gave his life on the cross. Because he lasted longer than the majority of them. Most of you be dead in no time at all. Because what happens is you suffocate in yourself because you're hanging. And, and there's no way to get down. You cannot relax because you're hanging. Then your lungs start to collapse. And you'll pass out and then you suffocate. Go ahead, though. Not to get away from the subject. I was saying that to say that you can't ask forgiveness. Right. After you do that. Right. Unless there's still a consciousness. So a shotgun to the head will blow the consciousness away. Ain't no consciousness left. <laughs> so in the long them lines, but y'all for us to just say it concrete and they say prove it. Because suicide is mentioned in here constantly. And, and the situation is, have we ever read where, I don't care under any situation, have we ever read said which is forbidden according to the law. We see where it says, if you lose your life, you should save it. But if you save your life, if that's a form of saving your life, then you're going to lose it. That's what we got to understand, that suicide is a form of saving your life. And what we mean by saving it, we mean that you don't want death from the nations or Satan. So you save your life, you take this way out. Or because what's going to happen is, suicide rate going to go up when the mark of the beast come out. That's when we're going to see suicide rate because those who've taken it are going to commit suicide. That's what Think that they can die, but they won't be able to. What you got, bro? We're going to keep and moving. And huh? keeping it scripturally, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 stipulates eloquently. What does it say? Verse 13. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Right. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Right. But will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So right here, if you repent, hold on, brother, if you repent, the Most High makes a way for you to be able to bear whatever's on your shoulders. 
Now, he made a way for David to bear what was on his shoulder, being the king of Israel and commit adultery, murder, entrapment, number of Israel all in the same time period, and then still called a friend of God. Then repentance is very powerful, y'all. But it has to be true repentance of the heart. Not of your own feeling or conscience. What you got? What you just said about in the, in the end times, I got this Revelation 9 and 6 that says, In those days shall men seek death and Absolutely. shall not find it. Absolutely. And shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. So, and they, this is what y'all seen on all the movies that they make of the living dead, walking with their brains blowed out. These are people that are probably taking the mark of the beast and trying to find the death angel, but he ain't going to show up. It's not going to happen for you because you're trying to escape what's written to get out of your punishment. It's without excuse. Ain't no escape clause in it. I'll just die and then we'll just go away. Nope. Don't play games with the most high. Let's read some more. What you got, Obed? Oh, 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 like the script say, those that endure to the end. Yeah. Right. You kill yourself. You're not endure to the end. Exactly. Right. 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 Let somebody else do it. Right. Or so it's some fine lines in there, y'all, but just because it has happened before and there was never a punishment from the most high coming behind that act, it's hard for me to say it based on certain things, you know. I, I, it's just hard to say it and you can't prove but what the two tell us we can prove. We can stand on them. Now, above the fine line, their conscience will be measured concerning that. But a blowing out of your brains is hard to see if you got any conscience left. There ain't no conscience left. So, y'all, it is what it is. And I, you might just hear the word to judge me, oh ye of little faith. Right, absolutely. Absolutely.